Hey everybody, John here from IncomeMesh.com. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe and the like button to get more digital marketing tips for beginners. And in today's video, I'm gonna go through these only real seven tools you need to be super effective with your video marketing, whether that's on YouTube, on Facebook ads, or anywhere else where you're using video to increase your reach and your brand. So we're gonna cover this in two different categories here. There's going to be kind of the hardware side of the actual equipment and stuff you need, and then the software side. And then in the end, I'll also add a little bit of mindset in there to help any, anybody out who's just getting started. But let's go ahead and dive right into the hardware. Before you, you know, when you think about video, the first thing you think of is the camera, right? But I highly recommend if you're getting started, you first recommend, uh, you first invest into a microphone instead of a webcam. If you just have your little laptop webcam, you know, maybe you might need to upgrade from that. But um, the audio is much more important on in a video than the actual uh, visual effects are. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but if you ever go to uh, any YouTube video and you find one where there's just really bad echoey, hollowy audio, you're more likely to be annoyed by that and bounce off of it than good video. Um, it, passable video like any phone can shoot today is plenty to get started, but having a good microphone is, I think, uh, the first investment you should make. And there's two here. I've used all of these, all the equipment we're talking about, I've used personally, and I can recommend either of these two microphones. The one here on the left is what I'm recording with right now. You can probably see it right there. It's on a little mount. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, this is the Blue Yeti. It's around $100. Sometimes they run sales. You can get a good deal on them. And I like it because it has a lot of different settings to allow you to kind of fine tune it just right. And kind of looks cool. I like it. And just the audio quality is quite clear that it comes through. And it works really easily. All you have to do is plug it into a single USB port. There is no additional hardware or anything you need to get it to work correctly. So that's a great one. And I started out using the Audio-Technica ATR2100. That's a cheaper microphone. It's around $60 to $70, depending on when you find it. Um, what's good about it is... Again, the price point is a little bit better, and it's a slightly smaller microphone than the Yeti. This thing is quite large and kind of in the way sometimes. Um, but what I don't like about the Audio-Technica is you have to get it really close to your lips to, for the audio quality to really sound good um, with most programs. And I like that the Yeti is a bit more, you can kind of keep it a bit out of the way uh, when you're going through. But both these are great investments and very easy to get started with. Nothing, it doesn't require any additional outside um, uh, software or outside um, connections like XLR cables or any of the, the fancy stuff. This is just pure USB microphones, which is great. And also somebody's recommending, Douglas recommends the Snowball. That's also a good one. Snowball is made by the same brand who makes uh, the Blue Yeti. So there's like the Snowball, there's um, a few others that are kind of in that same type of theme and they're all good products. I haven't used that one personally, but I do know uh, a lot of people like that as well. And as you'll notice here, this set that I'm using, the microphone is not sitting on the table. I'm using a uh, microphone stand with the windscreen, and that has a lot of benefits to it. So one thing, the biggest benefit, especially if you get a sensitive microphone like this one here, like the Yeti, is you'll notice whenever you're typing, because you'll be doing a lot of typing tutorials, I'm sure, uh, just whatever it is that you're sharing with the world, um, <clears throat> whenever you're typing, you'll really feel that vibration in the microphone itself. And so you need to have these little suspension things here. I probably don't want to mess up the audio too much, but these little elastic bands provide some suspension where it's a much cleaner audio experience and quality. And it's very easy to move, maneuver around, uh, increase the, the height, decrease it, so you get that really good blend of not being in the way of the, micro, of the camera, but also uh, being very clear and rich, picking up the right sound. So uh, that's about $20 on Amazon. All the links, by the way, to anything I'm talking about here will be in the description below. Uh, there are affiliate links for Amazon, so thank you in advance. Uh, but this will be exactly what I use, and I couldn't be happier with the, with the products. Okay, so once you've gotten your audio out of the way and you kind of you feel good with how you're sounding online, um, which you know another benefit is if you don't have a good webcam yet, you can always do podcasting and other audio pieces of content in there as well. Uh, but when you're ready to go to the video side, you don't need to invest for a long time into a big DSLR, you know, big ca uh, camera like that. I still don't use one in my content, and I don't know if I'll ever really need to upgrade to it. If you get a good webcam, like this one here is a Logitech HD Pro webcam C920. Uh, again, this is around $60, I believe it is. And you'll get 1080p quality video directly from your webcam, just plugs into a USB cord. It couldn't be easier. 
and it gives you enough quality to get your message across and not fully distract your people by you know how poor the quality looks. It's it's not going to be um, you know movie star quality, but you don't need that for YouTube. And you don't need that for premium products either. They care about the content, not necessarily the the design or the style of the of it. And so similarly, like the audio, you have the main th piece, the microphone, you have the kind of the accessories next. The lighting is very important. So right now I'm using only natural lighting. I'm sitting in front of a window. I, I won't move my webcam around, but I'm sitting in front of a window. I've got natural lighting going on and it's very easy for me to uh, get a decent, even light on my face. If you don't have the logistics or if you record at night or anything like that, you do need some additional lighting to kind of remove some of the shadows from your face. And I've been happy as I've tried several different solutions. The one that I'm definitely most happy with is a ring light. And so this is the one that I'm currently using. It's the newer, I don't know how to pronounce that, newer ring light. Again, around $100. This is not necessary uh, when you're getting started. Just you know, get in a position where you can be in front of lighting. But if you uh, go this route, it's really convenient. You can mount your webcam in the middle of, um, of the ring there, which is great. And that gives it a very even light on your face. And it's just very easy. There's not this big setup of multiple lights. And we've tried that as well, having like top lights, bottom lights, accent lights. It just, it seems like it's too much complication. And what you need to do is simplify things in the beginning and just keep creating content. So ring lights are that nice balance and they, they can fit pretty much anywhere in your, in your setup. All right. So after, and that's really all you need for hardware. You know, people talk about getting green screens and I've tried green screens. They're not my personal favorite. I've always found that it gets a little bit, uh, you know, maybe it's my skin tone. I'm not quite sure, but it always looks a little pixelated and fake. I just like to be natural and just kind of have the content going and, you know, say the message. So as far as hardware, get a microphone, get a uh, webcam and then additional accessories as you need. But that's really about it on the software side. Again, we're going to keep it simple. You need to be able to edit your software or edit your video as you're going through. So you're going to need some video editing software. I did a tutorial, I think yesterday on Screencast-O-Matic. It's the one I recommend if you're just getting started. If you're on a shoestring budget, it's like $1.20 per month. Like you can afford that, trust me. And it gives you the efficiency you need to quickly edit your videos, add just enough flair to them to, you know, pass that bar and get them published quickly to YouTube. And so you can get that at incomemesh.com slash screencast. Again, links are in the description below, uh, but super cheap, super easy to use, and uh, just very intuitive. I do prefer the Windows version over the Mac version. If you're on Mac, you know, you can still give it a try, but your mileage may vary. It's not quite as clean. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. So that's the only premium software I think you need to get started. There's much you can do to expand, but everything else is just completely free. So video is great, but if you want to go to live video, which is what I'm doing right now, this definitely takes a bit more courage. <laughs> this might be something you do as like a phase two or phase three once you've gotten a bit more comfortable in speaking on camera. Uh, but if you want to get into streaming, Open Broadcaster Software, OBS Studio. I'll have a tutorial on this coming out very shortly. Uh, but this is what I'm currently using to come in live now. And it's 100% free. It's open source, which means it's updated nicely. And, and it's... It's not the simplest thing to use. Like if you want simple and you want to just get it going, Screencast-O-Matic is where you want to be. But if you want to go live streaming and you don't have a big budget, OBS, which is what this is kind of the nickname for, is kind of the de facto right now. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. So I'll give you a tutorial on that later on to help you get started on that as well. And that's really, that's good for live streaming. You can also record natively, like you can record and not stream. So you could go completely free and not get Screencast-O-Matic. The problem is though, you'll need to still be able to edit the content, edit the videos before publishing. And uh, OBS does not have a solution for that. You could use uh, your built-in Mac software or Windows Movie Maker, I think it is, but I don't. I don't recommend those, or I don't recommend the Windows version. I don't. I can't really speak on the Mac side, uh, but it's not a very good experience. And then lastly, you're sharing content. You're sharing some sort of information. So you're probably going to want to make slides. Google Slides is awesome. It's free. It's what I'm using here. You can see this was a screenshot of me putting together the previous slide. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. You don't need anything more to get that message out there. So get started for free. Go with Google Slides and advance from there. I've seen some fancy presentation software being used and sold. 
And while it could add a little element, um, if it's going to add complexity, it might not be worth it. It might hold you back. And if you're used to producing four or five, you know, medium quality videos or medium high quality videos with Google Slides, if you have to drop that down to one video a week because you have more advanced software, I don't know if that's a good return on investment of your time. So that's really it uh, as far as the hardware and the software. But the last piece of advice, and this is again on the mindset side, is you got to have for video marketing, you have to have passion about the thing you're talking about because you're going to be talking about it for a while. You have to have a lot of patience because when you first get started, you might only have one or two people watching that video or and it'll slowly grow, but it's going to take a lot of patience as you're going through the process of building that YouTube channel or that any other platform you're working on building with video. And finally, positivity. It comes across in your voice when you're when you're delivering this content. It also gives, a, you know, it permeates through every part of what you're doing with your brand. So people don't want to follow people who are not very happy people, right? Like, why would they want to follow them? They're not going to be happier as a result of it. So you want to make sure that if your message is to help people get from point A to point B, that you can show that positivity in the process, even in the slow moments of building that brand using video as a platform. So again, I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. I hope this is helpful. If you want to get more tips on some of the best tools you should use to build your brand, head on over to my homepage, IncomeMesh.com. I've put up a database of the best marketing tools I like and recommend and review often. Uh, here, you can just put your, put your email address in and you'll be able to get access to that. It has different stacks where you can use them in what's right for e-commerce store versus a drop shipping store versus you know, this, that, and the other. And uh, so check that out for free. All right. Hope this is helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.